if you're trying to also find some problems to query store, um, probably the, and, and by problems, I'm meaning actually query store itself is having problems. Um, I usually just jump into the database query store options DMV. This will tell you kind of what's going on and your reasonings for some of this. So this lets me know it's desired to be in read, write it is in read, write. And the reason is zero, which means all's good. Sometimes query store can, it, it'll say read only. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I'll show, uh, it can also be in an error state. Uh, I personally never had to work on a query store that's in an error state. The funny thing is Microsoft's first recommendation is turn it off and turn it back on again. And that's not your server. Don't, don't get me. You don't have to restart the service. You can just alter database, set query store off, alter database, set query store on. If that doesn't work, it might be that there's actually corruption in your query store data. And so there is actually a DBCC check just for the query store data. Uh, it does have to be off. You know, you do have to set query store off uh, to run the consistency check. It will error out otherwise. So you you would just set it. I'm going to do this on an adventure works database because my wired world importer is just doing something. So I'll set that off. I can run the consistency check and then I can turn it back on. And at that point, I can see that, you know, it's it's going to be looking good. Um, the read only reasons are here. I got these from Microsoft. So if there's any questions, read, please check the documentation. If you see a bitwise, you know, so this is a bit style column. If you see something else here, check Microsoft documentation. It'll be much more up to date. One is read only single user emergency mode. It's a secondary replica. Um, maybe it's full size. Maybe the memory limit is hit too high, you know, you've, you've filled the buffer for what query store is going to be using and it's got to wait to flush to disk, uh, or the disk size limit has been reached and can't grow. And this one's going to be an Azure, Azure SQL database one only. And so I'll just show you that, you know, right over here, we've got, um, read, write, the read only reason is zero. If we set the adventure works to single user mode, we can go ahead and see that, you know, Hey, read only reason two. Well, that corresponds to single user mode. And if we set it to emergency mode, you'll see that actually the read only reason is six, which means it's in single user mode and emergency mode. So that's how the, the bitwise works. Um, I believe there are some functions people have written in the community that'll just parse that for you. So. If you're a person like me, I love extended events personally. Um, there are, I'm just going to touch on it real quick. Query Store's got 93 events in SQL Server 2019, Service Pack, whatever that I'm at, 4198. Lots of different things that you can do, lots of different things Query Store could be doing that you might want to get information on. Maybe you had a plan force that failed and you wanted to know more information. Uh, maybe you had, um, you want to know whenever it's, um, you know, size, you know, getting over an allocated amount of, uh, of space. If, if things got put into the buffer and that actually would put it over the size, maybe you want to know that. Maybe you want to know when it's out of space or, or when it changes its state. Lots of things you can do with extended events. Um, and there's also some areas in the 2017 plus in regards to automatic tuning for when automatic tuning happens. Now, we're going to talk about that as a, in a minute, but I did want to say that there's lots of events that you can do in regards to Query Store with extended events for seeing what's going on and finding out, you know, maybe there's errors or or how often does it, how, off, how long is it taking to do those cleanup modes and how often they happen. You can use extended events for that. The 2017 option here with the um automatic tuning i i have a lot i have really good um experience with this i had a client that was on a system that i was getting probably a performance call every day from they were on 2017 we had query store i was tuning queries i was at doing indexes and everything we had maintenance going well but man still something was coming up and so there's this option in 2017 called uh, automatic tuning force last good plan. Now, currently this is the only option in 
um, on-premise 2019 for automatic tuning, which probably means Microsoft will do more with it, I hope. What this does is SQL Server using the query store data, again, persisted to disk, to find out what it can do. Can it, can, are, are, are we having queries that are going bad or, or such? This is a quick example. It will show me that, hey, we had a query that was running at 1,597 milliseconds. If I use this other plan, I got it down to 494, so I'm going to force it. And it says it successfully did that. And as you can see, some of these might have expired. It did them previously. Statistics changed. Um, again, this query of parsing JSON also from the Microsoft website with a few little modifications to myself, but um, all out on Microsoft's website there, links will be at the end. Um, it shows if you've personally forced a plan or if you've unforced a plan, lets you know the status. And then it also kind of gives you a estimated gain in percentage wise of like, how much did that do? And this automatic tuning, when I looked at that system, was just going all over the place. I had hundreds of entries in here of it just doing little tweaks, you know, five milliseconds down to two milliseconds and, and 100 milliseconds down to 20. And I was like, I can't tune that fast. This was handling a lot of that, that little things that just were really great. I recommend using it. I haven't personally had any issues with using it. If you do, I'd be interested to know what, because I just want to be more informed. The one thing about this, all of these metrics as to the reason will be kept until a reboot, at which point they're flushed. It's just like any of your other DMVs, so you'll need to um, be aware of that. Some of these state options, active, verifying success, reverted, expired. Um, it's not like, hey, it ran bad, or you know, your query ran really well, now it's running poorly, we're gonna immediately use the old one. It sometimes does take a few iterations, a few extra query runs for it to be able to figure that out. Um, and I, this is just some stuff that I used to, to build that um, query. Um, our two trace flags that I would recommend just being aware of, 7752 and 7745. Real quick, 7752 allows query store data to be loaded asynchronously on a SQL Server startup or failover may be an issue because if uh, it is the normal behavior now on 2019 to have that trace flag, but what this could mean is if you had a 50 gig, let's say you put query store to 50 gig and you fail over, it won't have that database come online on your always on until all 50 gigs are loaded into memory for query store and, and it's all, all ready to go. So that could be a problem. And for me, I'd rather my database be online than not. Um, Trace slide 7745, kind of similar. It's for shutting down. Um, if you just do a shutdown, you know, uh, of your SQL server, uh, it's going to flush all those buffers to disk. And personally for me, if I'm shut down a SQL server, I want it to shut down. I don't care if I lose a little bit of query store data. And then there's lots of stuff that people are doing in the community. Um, if you're into DBA tools, which man, I really recommend everybody in the community be into DBA tools. There's a couple options. You can just copy DB store configuration from one server and put it onto another one. Real simple to just, yeah, and all my databases have it. You can pull query store options and you can set them individually. Eric Darling writes SP Quickie Store. Really easy to use, helpful to track data because instead of trying to you know, use the built-in reports. You can use things maybe you're more familiar with of what's the procedure name or, hey, I always see a lot of my update statistics as being high rate or high reads. I want to ignore those. A lot of that stuff's built into his uh, functionality. Brent Ozars writes a lot of stuff. He's got SP Blitz Query Store. So just like his, you know, Blitz cache and stuff, but this is against Query Store. And there's some plural plural site courses. Aaron Stilato has one. Gail Shaw has another one. Um, great courses. I definitely recommend them to kind of go a lot deeper. And some of the stuff I've gone over should be very, very familiar as well. Um, I also have just lots of links. Information uh, about the automatic tuning, minor changes to query store, removing individual clear queries, uh, how to use force, different blogs on force last good plan. And I recommend, um, if you're interested, 
I had as a primary resource, I want to shout out to Tracy Baggiano and Grant Fritchie, their query store for SQL Server 2019. Excellent resource. Um, I don't think my camera will get it, but it's a it was an excellent book. I enjoyed reading it, but again, I also find query tuning fun. <laughs>